How is it going guys? My name is Wanzi Burnett and welcome back to Katawa Shoujo. And in the last episode I had a bit of a feelsy rant! And then things and stuff happened and we hugged Emmy because Emmy is best girl and hugging Emmy is better than meth. Shout out to Swagnet. Anyway, strange that if- uh, ah, I'm gonna- I'm gonna change the punctuation on this. Strange. It feels so natural for me to go up to the roof these days. I never would have done such a thing at my old school. In those days, I like to eat alone. No, that's not quite true. Though I like to sit alone, I also like to watch people. I always figured that was the sort of person I was, but it appears I was just wrong. Then again, I also thought I was the sort of person who had a normal heart, so there you have it. I don't know myself that well, and I'm going to put my phone on silent, goddammit. Now I'm on the roof, so that I can have lunch with a couple of people. And they are both girls, which is even stranger. Oddly enough, I feel closer to Emmy and Rin than I felt to anyone at my old school. Somehow, I get the feeling they'd at least visit me if I wound up in the hospital. I focus on the view from the roof, banishing such thoughts from my head. There's a light breeze blowing and the sun is shining high in the sky. The name itself, uh, the sky itself is a deep blue with hardly a cloud in it. It's gotten pleasantly warm, and I sit down to wait for my friends. I close my eyes and enjoy the feeling of the sun seeping into my skin. Damn, don't fall asleep! Oh, he's fell asleep. He's fell asleep! Oh, for God's sake. For God's sake! Don't ever fall asleep in public! It does never end well. Voices intrude upon the edge of hearing. Seems to have fallen asleep on us, Ren. Maybe he's faking to lull us into a false sense of security. Why would he do that? Uh, why would he do that? Uh, that was awful. No idea. Still, you make a good point. We should kick him or something to make sure that he's really asleep. What? Damn. Kick him anyway, because banter. Amy looms over me like only a short girl can, peering at me intently. Oh, you're awake. I guess we don't have to kick you then. Was it part of your master plan? What are you talking about? You sound like just, she sounds like Kenji now. It was all part of your master plan before the males take over the school. <laughs> all of the meninists. It's the Meninist Conspiracy Theory. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> God, I'm such an idiot. Emmy shrugs, her twin tails bouncing with the motion. I'm not sure either. You must be pretty tired to fall asleep out here. Although it's pretty comfortable, I suppose. She plops down next to me and begins to eat. <laughs> that was kind of cute, the way in, like, she's in the background, she just goes... Now I'm sat down. <laughs> Or in sips opposite from the two of us, a move which only makes me more aware of the girl sitting next to me. If I didn't know any better, I swear Rin did it on purpose. I concentrate on my food, trying to tune out the majority of the conversation that Rin and Emmy are having. Despite my best efforts, however, I still find myself glancing over at Emmy whenever she speaks. I notice how she purses her lips when she's thinking about something, squinting slightly as if that would improve her thinking ability. Rin says something that makes Amy laugh, and I notice perhaps for the first time, like, how she laughs with her whole body, rocking back and forth, head thrown back, almost like she's about to fall over. I probably look like a creep. It's about this time that I realise Amy's looking at me, her voice slightly raised, so she's probably just asking, uh, just asked me a question. <laughs> uh, sorry, I kinda zoned out for a moment there. Amy rolls her eyes with a slight quirk of the eyebrow, is the only sign uh, that Rin's even paying attention- oh, okay. I said, did you get a career survey in your class too? You know, one of those what do you want to do after high school things? I don't think so. Maybe we'll get one tomorrow. What are you going to put down? That's a really good question. I guess I always figured I'd go to college after high school, but I have no idea what to do once I got there. With the heart attack and all, I'd been really concentrating on each day as it came rather than making long-term plans. I suppose I can safely start planning ahead again. I always liked having at least a vague plan for my future, so it'll be nice to come up with one again. Of course, that doesn't change the fact that right now I've got absolutely no clue. Hey, nice little transition, that's clever script writing there. I always just kind of assumed I'd figure it out in college. That or just become a salaryman, that's kind of popular. But what do I really want to? Uh, but do I really want to? That's a tough question. I guess I don't really want to do anything. You don't sound very excited about that one, do you? She laughs as she says this, and I'm caught up in her laugh again. It's so girlish. High and jiggly. Giggly. Jiggly. How does someone have a jiggly laugh, Alex? Come on! 
so girlish, high and giggly, like a, well, pardon the cliche, like a babbling brook, like a babbling brook. Her skin as soft as the, as the smoothest peach, her eyes as fair as, well, a pharaoh, but I don't know. <laughs> God's sake. I'm in a weird mood today. It bubbles out of her, starting in her belly and working its way up to her throat. I can't help but laugh myself. It's infectious. <laughs> yeah, I guess I'm pretty unhappy with the salaryman idea. But to be honest, I haven't given much thought to the future recently. I suppose that these days I've been more concerned with living one day at a time. Emmy considers this for a moment and grins. That's a pretty good idea, Hazal. I just wrote down pirate. Arr! I'm momentarily stunned, then I start laughing. I stop myself and manage to gasp out a question. You're... you're not actually serious, are you? Emmy looks mock offended. Well, I've got the legs for it already, so I just kind of figured. Even Rin seems amused by this. Just you wait, I'll be the terror of the high seas. You are a pirate. I'll show you all. I've even been working on my pirate voice. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Ideas. <laughs> She suddenly springs up and begins swaggering up and down the rooftop, shouting orders. Yar, me hearties, give them a broadside with the long guns. We'll wear their guts for garters. <laughs> Do you even know what that means? Rin's unexpected interruption stops at me in her tracks. <laughs> Do you even know what that means, you fucking idiot? <laughs> I swear to god. Rin reminds me of Leafy is here for some reason. Just the... Oh my god, what a fucking idiot. <laughs> How's it going, guys? Leafy here. Oh, no, I can't do Leafy. I can't. I'm not even going to. <laughs> not really. But it's all in the delivery. The ringing of the bell prevents her from demonstrating her point further. Yar har fiddled it! <laughs> Let's just not. Let's not go there! <laughs> Emmy dashes off immediately, leaving Rin and myself alone on the roof. So, you want to get married? <laughs> oh my god. Rin stares at me intently for a few moments. Is there something wrong? Rin considers this question closely for a moment. After a lengthy pause, she shakes her head. Nope. 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 <laughs> oh my god. Oh, um, why the staring then? Rin shakes her head again. Nope. I don't get it. Get what? The staring thing. You two seem to, but I don't. Great, she saw me staring now. She probably thinks I'm a pervert or something. Actually, probably not. This is Rin we're talking about after all. Still, I feel the need to defend myself. I wasn't staring, I was just tired. Rin actually snorts at this, but she doesn't say anything. No, really, I was just distracted is all. Mm. <laughs> Eager to end this conversation, I head down to class. I'm greeted by the twin spectres of Shizuna and Misha, looking like they mean business. It's been about 10 episodes since I've seen these two. Well, Shizuna looks like she means business anyway. Misha just looks like she's about to start laughing at any minute. Up on the roof again, Hee-chan? You know that's dangerous, don't you? Dot dot dot. That's right. The school cannot be held responsible for any injury that comes from being up there, you know? Furthermore, we can't repeat, uh, report you for breaking the rules. Misha leans in and whispers conspiratorially. But we won't, he chan You three are cute together. She straightens up again, laughing at my sudden blush. Wahahaha! <laughs> You're too easy to tease, he chan well, Come on. I'm still new here. Sort of. Isn't it mean to pick on the newcomer like this? Nope! It's to help you get acclimat acc acclimated. Acc acclimated. Acclimated, yeah. Acclimated to your new surroundings. Uh, I see. Well, do you have to be so overzealous about it? Yep. Ah, that aside, Hee-chan, we were looking for you this morning, but you weren't in your room. Of course I wasn't. I was out for my morning exercise, or here in class, bright and early. Unlike you. She's and they looks peeved. And a beat later, so does Misha. Or she tries to, at any rate. That was because of student council business. You should be grateful that we worked so hard for you. Oh, I am, I am. So what did you need me for? Not another attempt to rope me in to do that dirty work, I hope. We had to give you something, but since you weren't around, we dropped it off in your room. Something like what? Oh, you'll find out when you get back, he chan ha 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 Muto entering the room ends our conversation, and we all head back to our seats. It's only after I've settled down at my desk and the teacher started talking about something or other that something odd strikes me. 
What did Rin mean? You two seem to... Was Emmy staring at something too? For a brief moment, I considered that Emmy was staring at me the way I was staring at her. Of course, that's ridiculous. Still, I can't deny that I wouldn't mind if it were true. Damn, he already likes her. He likes her, but I... Yeah, I like Emmy. I, I think Emmy's the kind of person that I would want to date, to be honest. But it's best not to think of that. No need to get my hopes up. Come to think of it, when did I start having hopes like that anyway? I shake my head in an attempt to clear it and focus on the lesson. Damn. After class, I make my way to my room. Muto really piled on the homework today. Before I can open my door, however, I am suddenly intercepted by Kenji, who has just exploded out of his room in a flurry of papers. Hey, we need to talk. These rooftop shenanigans of yours, man. They've got to stop. What? You're running around on the rooftop with the limbless wa- The limbless wonders! Oh my fucking god! Oh my god! Oh my god! What you got? The fucking limbless wonders. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> I, I, I need a moment. <laughs> there are women, man. You'll get yourself killed running around like that. I don't follow. Kenji sighs and adjusts his glasses before what could be understood as an attempt at explaining himself patiently. Look, we're friends, so I'm telling you this for this for your own good. But if I were going to kill someone, I'd do it by throwing them off the roof and making it look like an accident. And if I've thought of it, you can be sure they've thought of it too. They're crafty. Almost as crafty as I am. I, I see. Good. I'm glad we had this chat. Loan me 500 yen. You caught- I need a minute. It's funny, because at the time this, this conversation was going on, my dad decided to walk through the door. I, I, I'm sorry? I need to get a drink, man. I've been inside all day, and the tap water's been compromised, as I'm sure you'll know. So I need to stock up on something canned, got it? But to do that, I need 500 yen. And since I've just saved your life with my timely advice, you can at least spare me 500 yen. You know, if it'll make him, fi go, uh, <laughs> if it'll make him go away, 500 yen is a bargain. I hand the money over to Kenji, who not in- Oh god. Right, let's let's see if it works. Right, does it work? Nope. Oh, yes, maybe. Does it? Oh yeah, okay, okay. We can use the scroll wheel. Woo! I hand the money over to Kenji, who not in thanks and dashes off down the hallway, but not before he locks his door. What an exhausting person. I'd better go, in case he changes his mind. Hmm? As I close my door, my heels tap against something lying on the floor. It's a brightly coloured rectangle of paper. Ah, this must be the something Misha mentioned before. Probably a student council leaflet that she slid under the door. However, when I pick it up, I find that I couldn't have been more wrong. Someone actually wrote me an old hand an old fashioned handwritten paper letter. Who bothers doing something like that in this day and age anyway? Yet as unlikely as the prospect of receiving one sounds, this is definitely a letter I have in my hands. I was planning on, uh, planning on finishing my homework, getting some dinner, and then going to bed in order to be ready for tomorrow's run. However, the, nat uh, the letter has naturally caught my interest. I sit at my desk to examine it properly. It's the first piece of mail I've received here at Yamaku, so it'd feel special even if it wasn't something as rare as a handwritten letter. What causes me even more trepidation is the name of the sender, written neatly on the back of the envelope. Iwanako. I have no idea why she would write to me. I haven't been in contact with anyone from my old school since I transferred, and Iwanaka was the last person I'd expect to want to write me a letter. The last time I saw Iwanaka was terribly awkward, embarrassingly so. She came to my hospital room, peeled an apple out of courtesy for me, and then we practically sat in silence for half an hour. She said goodbye and didn't even look me in the eye when she closed the door. It might have been a natural end to the series of events that were probably pretty painful for both of us. Every time she visited me in the hospital, I wanted to talk to her, but something stopped me every time. Every time that I didn't speak made the next time even harder. She looked so guilty that I didn't want to say anything that might upset her, and I could never figure out the right words to say. I think Iwanaka blamed herself for my heart attack. That's ridiculous, of course, but knowing it and believing it are two very different things. I told her that it wasn't her fault. She nodded, 
and I really think she understood that if it had been that, then sooner or later something else would have made my heart give out. Yet she looked so hopelessly sad every time she opened that door and entered my room. So I never managed to say the things I wanted to say. In the end, I think that might have hurt her even more. <laughs> Carefully, I opened the envelope and drew out the folded letter from within. Dear Hazel, how are you? I hope you're well and happy at your new school. Everyone here misses you. Almost all of our second year class got put together in, the th in class 3-1 for the final year, so we're pretty comfortable right now from the beginning of the year. I'm sure you would have been assigned to this class as well. The mood amongst the third year seems very anxious about, about their exams, even though they are so far away. The teachers are badgering us about it all the time. Even old Mr. Tachibana, who is, by the way, our homeroom teacher this year. Would you believe it? I was sure that he'd retire after our second year, but here he is, nagging everyone about studying for exams. I think things like that are the main reason why the mood among the third years is so nervous. I must admit that I'm somehow losing confidence in myself as well, even though I've always fared reasonably be well in exams. It's so weird to think we're already seniors, isn't it? Time really has flown, hasn't it? I wonder where it went. The new first year seems so young and somehow really innocent. I keep wondering if I was like them in my first year. I've been feeling nostalgic like this for the whole third first trimester. There are other things I want to say. I'm writing to you because I felt there were things I should have said after the accident back in winter. I really regret that I wasn't able to see them in person and I have no excuse for it. Yeah, I think I've had quite enough of this. What? <laughs> Finish reading it? I, I crumple up the sheet of paper and toss it across the room. My aim is off, so the letter cr rolls under my nightstand instead of going into the wastebasket. That was an apology for an abandoning me, except that I don't need it anymore at this point. The hospital seems like a lifetime ago, and here now I've got other things on my mind. Emmy, for starters. It wasn't great to be abandoned during my stay, but it's not something I'm worried about anymore. In fact, I hadn't even thought about the hospital in what feels like forever until this letter came in. It's almost annoying to have received it. I've got exams to study for. I have no time for the past. No, about that homework. Go, go, uh... I want to know what the hell was in that letter. <laughs> like, ridiculously, I really, really want to know what was in that letter. Damn it! Oh, what time? 17. Oh, I don't really think there's much time for recording anymore right now, but I think I'm... Yeah, I think I'm going to have to leave it here, so... Ah! Such a cliffhanger -y point. Damn it, that was interesting, and that's really open. I didn't expect to, to hear that Iwanako even try and come back into the plot. I thought she was literally just a plot device. I didn't think she was anything. I thought she was just a, a, a reason why he had his heart attack. God damn it. But anyway, I'm really enjoying this. I'm really enjoying getting back into this game. But yeah, thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you have, don't forget to leave a like and all of that other jazz. And I will see you guys in the next episode. Have a great day and a great life. And I will see you later. See you later. That was awful. Wow.